What's up, Mitten Squad? My name is Paul. Welcome to a uh, a tutorial. I haven't done one of these before on this channel. Um, I was experimenting with some thumbnails the other day, just making some, doing stuff, and I posted them to the R Let's Play subreddit and to get some feedback in the uh, the thumbnail Thursday thread. And someone asked me how to make them. Uh, I tried to explain it, didn't do a good job, and I told him I could make a video, and that's what this is. Um, if my voice sounds different, I'm not in the normal place that I record, because that's not really the greatest place to do something like this. It's not really good for doing stuff on a computer and talking, so, uh, so that's that. Basically, the style I'm going to be going over is recreating the, the logo in that style so you can see here with the Red Dead Redemption the part one looks like the logo uh, I'm gonna be showing you how to do this one Wolfenstein the New Order this isn't the actual logo for this game uh, the actual logo is uh, pretty much that I might have it here somewhere this that's the actual logo uh, just without the stroke but I think this red stands out a little better might not be as easy to read on a small screen because uh, reds aren't very good for thumbnails, they're a weird color. Uh, the Wolfenstein and this one. I'll be going through these three, hopefully. I don't have a ton of time to do this, but it's either now or like next week sometime. So I figured I could get through some of these. Um, these are pretty much three basic ones, sort of. Like, if I can get through all these, it'll show you how to do all of... The things that I do to make these thumbnails. This one is really simple and they get uh, increasingly, increasingly complex, I guess. So Wolfenstein, South Park, Red Dead Redemption. Let's just, uh, let's start. So first thing you gotta do, open up a new Photoshop uh, image template, example, whatever you want to call it. Uh, 1920 by 1080, you could do it with 1280 by 720 if you wanted to. But I love doing it this way just because it's a bigger image. You could always copy everything over to a smaller uh, resolution image if you wanted to. Get rid of that little lock. So first, you got to start out with going to uh, going to Google Images to find your game logo. Uh, I'm doing this on a Mac. Everything should be pretty much the same if you're on a Windows computer. But some things are going to be a little different, not a huge deal. Uh, shouldn't be too difficult. This is running slower because 1. Screen recording, 2. Capturing audio, 3. Running Photoshop, and 4. I'm doing this on the battery, not plugged into the wall. So, red, dead, redemption, logo. Find that at read, whatever. Corrected it, there it is. Um, this is the one I used, I don't like that big black spot on the top it just looks a little weird so this is the one I used um, I already had it saved this one they didn't load properly let's try this one um, so you can either save it as a or you can look for it as a transparent image uh, which basically means there's no bullshit in the background it's uh, checkered so you save that then you open it up as a PNG and there won't be that background I'm not too concerned about it for the sake of this so I copied it control V Command V, whatever. Uh, resize it. You can't see it, but there is a white background. Magic wand. Get rid of that. Magic wand again. Uh, wrong layer. Get rid of that. And there we go. Now we just have a logo. Let's uh, let's size that. Um, you want to make sure that the logo can be read from a small image. So. Um, you know, just zoom out, zoom in, see what looks nice. You can play with it later. So then, odds are, you probably won't have this font installed. I know what it is. It's uh, Chinese Rocks. But if you don't, you just search Red... Why did I spell that wrong? Dead Redemption Font. Keep spelling shit. Uh, Defont. Defont is probably one of the better sites for free fonts. Just search for stuff. Uh, there's stuff like this, someone says, what's this font? And then someone's find it, someone find it. Find it? I'm doing this quick. Chinese rocks, here it is. It looks 
almost identical. So go back. Well, you'll need to download it. If you're on a Mac, it's just uh, it'll save it as like a zip or a .ttf. Just open her up and double click the the TTF. It'll install it. It'll take you to the font book. Then just click install. Sometimes it'll give you a little error uh, with a yellow triangle thing. Just check mark the font and click install font. Go back into Photoshop and go to your typey type tool, whatever this is called. I'm getting this pinwheel one because I have a lot of fonts installed. Last time I checked, I had 2,000 something, maybe 2,500 fonts. Kind of a pain in the ass sometimes. So I know what I'm doing, but if you didn't, um, you could just do like red, dead. This is too big. Uh, just so you can make sure that it looks accurate. Chinese rocks, there it is. Click, and there we go. So, it's pretty accurate. If you wanted to play with it a little more, you could just resize it like this. Maybe do that. If you wanted it to look accurate, but I'm not too worried about it. So, then, go back to your typing tool, go up, you will highlight the text, go up here to the font color tool, whatever you want to call it, um, and just highlight, pick a color from the text. Uh, white is the logo. You could always just go straight up to white, but I think doing it this way is better because you get the exact color. You don't have to worry about it being a little off. Uh, then you just go ahead and go up here to stroke or it's a little FX button. I'm not really explaining what buttons I'm pressing a lot because I'm not a teacher. I'm not a tutorial guy. I know what I'm doing. Uh, so I don't really feel the need to explain it, but it's... To some people, this might be kind of tricky. Uh, then you just bump up the stroke. Stroke is just... It's a, a color surround it, surrounding the uh, the text. Uh, these all do various things. Drop shadow gives you a shadow. Outer glow makes a glow outside the outside the text. Um, you can use a combination of these. Like if you wanted, say, two strokes, you could make this red. Go up to normal, opacity all the way up. Bump up the spread. Turn the distance to zero, and bump that up, and bam, you've got another stroke. Even though it's technically a drop shadow, uh, we're not doing that. Oh, I didn't save it. Bump that all the way back up. And then you just reselect the text, change it to part one, or you could do uh, episode one or number one. Sometimes these fonts don't have things like the, uh, the ampersand, that's a plus sign. There's another plus sign. I hit the ampersand sign, though. Part 1. Just size that. Now we need the background image, so... Red... Why do I keep typing read? Red Dead Redemption. Uh, gameplay. This is just a template. In my thumbnails, I like to use a actual... Like a still from the video, but... Not doing that in this case. Uh, so you just want to find one that looks nice. I'll try and find the exact one I used. Here it is. It's not going to look exactly the same because I don't remember the exact uh, um, filter I used, like the exact settings on it. So, if you remember in the the example I showed you, John Marston was on the right. So just reverse it. And you don't have to just do it like this. You could zoom out. And maybe you want them to be bigger or smaller. Just play around with it to get something you like. Then bring that down. And the text and the logo should be a little smaller. Right about there. Hopefully you can't hear my laptop or my Mac. If you can, I'll edit that out so it won't be a big deal. So now what we have to do is give this the... Uh, the cutout or poster look. 
So I don't have it showing, but up here to filter, go to filter gallery. And there's a bunch of different filters that you can choose from. This one looks pretty close to what it was. It's not as, uh, as detailed. I think right about maybe five, no, six. Oh, you can play around with these. There's a whole bunch of different textures that you can choose from uh, to really make it look different. I went with this one because it's different enough and it stands out from the actual gameplay. The what everyone, everyone else is just going to have a still from the gameplay from the video. Doing it this way it makes it stand out a little bit. And I don't know the step forward thing. But it just looks... It's different. So uh, let's go ahead and open up the example. The, the one I actually made that I spent time on. And we'll just compare the two. So I did the wrong... I had the wrong logo. This is the one I showed you in the beginning. And... There's the actual one. Um, pretty similar. This one, I'm thinking that I might have played around with this because uh, I did like shift it around to make it fit this, the Red Dead. I uh, probably didn't need to do that, but that's that. Now you've got a thumbnail that looks good, it looks decent. It's not amazing, because, I mean, I spent, like, four minutes on this. But it's not bad. So I'm not going to save that, because I already have one that I need. Uh, what was the next one? Wolfenstein. That's another pretty easy one. Another new. I have a preset 1920 by 1080 Get rid of that. And now we need the Wolfenstein the New Order logo. Well, actually, in my case, I didn't. So, I'm just going to show you how I did it. Uh, Wolfenstein font, you need that. I already have it installed, I'm not going to install it, I'll show you where I got it. Um, sometimes you might run into a situation where a font is, I guess, copyrighted or you have to buy it. Sometimes you can just search uh, the name of the font with a free font at the end, and you might be able to find it. Sometimes you won't. So there it is, Wolfenstein. And that's that. See, this is a case where you can download it and just download and install it and then you're good to go you can start rocking out so T is the keyboard shortcut for the text one of the problems I'm gonna have I will have in just a moment so we'll let's just make this red wolf and wolf and I don't care if I spell it right so I need to find I didn't use the exact logo, uh, Wolfenstein logo, because if you saw, I had the red, um, look, sort of this going on, so, it was from the Xbox 360 version of Wolfenstein, whatever that one was called, uh, Xbox 360 logo, maybe that'll be it. I'm smell, spelling stuff wrong, Google autocorrects, so I'm not worried about it. This is the image I used. Wow, my laptop is getting loud. Control V, T, change this. Uh, e is the erase thing, I just can get rid of this. All I need is the actual logo. Change the size, right about there. So, go back to your text. To your uh, your Wolfenstein, did I spell that right? Looks like it. Highlight it, find your Wolfenstein font, select it. There you go, you've got that. You're halfway there, almost. So move this back down. Move this down. Let's put that on top. Alright, now we get into some of the fun part. So, let's... Okay, let's just zoom in real quick. What did I just do? Uh, I get. It. I made it white. Okay. So you can see there's a white stroke around it. 
there's a drop shadow, there's an inner shadow, and there's a gradient from a brighter red up top to a darker red on the bottom. So that's pretty simple to recreate. Just make sure you have your Wolfenstein text selected. Go to the Layer Style tool, that's what that's called. And just go to Stroke, click on the white, click OK, and bump up the font size. What I should do is make the background for here black so I can see it better. In fact, I, I think I'll do that. Uh, actually, I'll just make it red. Paint bucket, bam. Alright, let's go back to the to the text. And we need a drop shadow on the inside. Drop shadow. Uh, if you're going to be using multiple shadows that are, I guess, facing different ways. Because you can see this one's going to the right or to the left. And this one is sort of coming in this way. Uh, you can use global lighting and that'll make the shadow, like, pretend you had, like, a light over here. Like, if it was a three-dimensional space, it would have, it would be shining this way. And if you don't want to do that, um, just deselect this and you can have multiple angles, I guess, for the lighting. Each, uh, each option, each style will have its own make-believe lighting source. I don't know if I'm doing a good, do uh, good job of explaining this. I don't do tutorials, that's why. But, it's got a drop shadow. Uh, you can play around with all these if you want. They all do different things. Slightly different. So, there's not very much spread. I should explain what the spread is. Uh, the spread is basically... You can see, like, how rigid it is. There's... It fades out. I guess, and that there is no fade, it's just solid. Uh, so it's kind of, the actual logo is kind of, kind of not so rigid. Um, it's not super far, it's also not super dark. And it is sort of more of a gray. I don't think it's 100% either. Uh... So you just gotta play around with it. Make it look nice. I think that looks pretty good. I mean, it's gonna be small. So it doesn't even have to come close to looking perfect. So next stop is the gradient overlay. That's a pattern. Gradient overlay. Click on the gradient. Um, I just click on one of these just to give me a little preset. So the left. Uh, by default, the left is the bottom, and the right is the top. I kind of think that's a little reverse. Not a huge deal, so just click on the color, and just find one down here towards the bottom. Right about there. It's kind of a maroonish um, color. And then just choose one up here. I think right there is a good one. Maybe bump it up a little more. Maybe a little more. A little more. And this, it sort of fades right around there. And this one, it's a really gradual. So, I'll just click this and kind of bump it down a little bit. Uh, I don't want that. Nope. Maybe a little less gradual. What the fuck? Maybe right there. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Not perfect, but not bad either. Then we've got an inner shadow. Inner shadow. Bump it all the way up. And... The choke is pretty much the same thing as the, uh, as the spread. I think it's not coming from the same way, is it? Because there's a shadow on the left, but not the right, so it would be... Maybe it is. No, it's not. Kind of... Right about there, actually. Uh, so one thing I really don't know how to do is... I mean, if you look, there's texture all over this. It looks kind of like... 
maybe like it's like a cement sort of texture. Uh, you could always just like find a cement texture, then just select all of these, uh, then inverse select when and then select the, the cement and then it'll delete everything but the letters on that cement layer so you'll have like a cement text. I could do a different video about that if I wanted to and then so I've got that done. Move the logo up there. So now we need an image from the game. Wolfenstein New Order Gameplay. Keep spelling shit wrong. Um I think this was the one I used. Yep. Copy. Go on here. Paste. And I changed it a little bit. I think I had it more like this. So now we need the new order and then part one. So we can just duplicate. And then duplicate again. Control T to move them around. This will be the part one. And this one will be the new order. So I'll change real quick to this to the right size. It's smaller. Then just T pinwheel. And then just change that to the new order. And because it is small, I don't want that much of a stroke around it. It needs to be sort of uh, proportional. Just do it like that. And just put it like right around there. On the actual logo, with the that font is small, so it looks pretty close. And then T again, just uh, go up select that one. Wolfenstein copy two, and just change this to part one. And I think. That should go right about there. And I think all of these should be a little bigger. So just uh, start with part one, shift all the way down to Wolfenstein. And you can just change the size of all of them. I like it right about there. And because I didn't close Photoshop before I opened this one, I can just hit Command F. And it'll give me that filter. And, I mean, this isn't perfect. It's not exactly how I did it. But I really don't want to spend, like, 20 minutes just going over each of these. Because I went in and I actually made it look um, close to perfect. Or as close to perfect as I could. And red, I mean, that's not totally readable. But you can see it's Wolfenstein Part 1. And I think that looks not horrible. And the next one is... Lego Marvel Super Heroes. That one was a little bit more tricky. That's 20 by, should be 1080. Put that alright. Lego Marvel Super Hero. Marvel. Marvel. Marvel Super Heroes. Logo. Uh, I think I used this one. So, I couldn't find, I just hit my mic. I'll uh, just, I actually have that saved somewhere, so let's uh, open. Where do I have that thing saved? Images. Probably L Lego Lego. Do I not? Could have sworn that I did. Uh, do I have it somewhere? Maybe M Marvel. There it is. M for the whatever tool that is. Copy. Control V. I don't care about that. T. And size are up. So one thing I didn't like. That's a little bit too tall. I didn't like that the Lego logo was over there. Another thing I didn't like. Hit M. Grab the magic wand tool. Uh, I didn't like this shadow all over all these, so just hold shift as you select all of these and you can select them all. Go through and just grab all of them. 
I'm not gonna make this perfect. I did some uh, slight editing after I did this with the real one because uh, it didn't get all of it, but it looks decent. Might as well just grab that too. The H, the E. Did I miss any? Miss that? I don't think so. And I didn't like the drop shadow on there either. And I'm missing part of the outside. Is that grabbing all of it? Yes it is. You don't have to zoom out, I will. Click delete. Bam, it's all gone. So, I couldn't find this. Oh, I missed that one. I couldn't find this exact font, so what I did was I just... I went through all my fonts, I just found one that was sort of similar. But the first thing I did, uh, like I said, I don't like where this Lego logo is. So on a specific layer, you can uh, you can highlight it, you can select it, and then Control T, and you can just change that part of the actual image. So I moved it up here, right next to the Marvel logo. I'm not gonna make it perfect. Uh, kind of annoyed actually. I will. I uh, forgot. See, I didn't select the logo, the Lego logo. Control T, um, that needs to be a little, little shorter, right there. Move it over, Control T, there we go. Looks pretty good, and now these aren't over far enough, so just select it. Control T, slide it on over. Zoom out so it looks uh, somewhat even. Control D to deselect. There we go, I don't remember exactly what font I had. I open that. Yes. Uh, let's see. Text. What font did I use? If this will load. Uh, AMCAP. Oh yeah, it was a sort of like a marble-ish font. So, T. I'm gonna recreate this. I keep pointing. I'm gonna recreate superheroes. So super. That's all. Capitalize super. Uh, it's not big enough to show. He. How can I spell today? Oh, uh, it is AMCAP. Well, I just selected that. Perfect. Why does that look different? Oh, it's two different layers. That's fine. So I'll just start with. With um. With just super. I'll just do that one. Actually, no, I'll just do heroes. That'll be fine. Move that up. Okay, so, take a look at what's going on. You've got a bevel. You can tell by this whiteness, and it's sort of going all the way down and around some of the edges. You've got a reddish, reddish stroke, and there's also, this isn't so much of a gradient, it is like a, I don't know what you'll call it, but it is, I mean, it's kind of a gradient because it's going from a dark orange to a yellow to a white to another white. And if you really wanted to get fancy and really recreate that, you could in the gradient overlay. Uh, you would just have to make the the sections of the color really tight and really small. Uh, you could do that pretty easily, but I'm not going to do it. So we'll just zoom out, go back to our layer style. And start doing this. So, color, and just grab that red. Kind of a darker red, uh, right there. Okay. And it needs to be a little bigger, obviously. Bump that up. It's a little bit too big. I like that one. I don't know why I hit enter. So, there's no drop shadow, but there is a bevel. Uh, depth size. Make it a little smaller. Right there, I like. And then next is the gradient overlay. So, it looks like I, I think I did it with three colors from yellow to white to red or to orange. So, just find one with three colors. Slide these over. And there we go. So, select the blue and just select 
uh, one of the darker oranges. Go to the middle. Select that white-ish color. It's not perfectly white, but it is kind of close. And then select that other orange. Could be wrong here, but I think I did sort of like this. Right there. So it is sort of more like it. Uh, let's take a look. Oh, I, I gave it a another stroke. So there is my drop shadow, but I will give it one just so that acts as another stroke. Distance zero, and we'll just make it right right there. So that's not, I mean, that's not perfectly accurate. There's also a, I don't think this is in uh, an italicizable font. No. So what you can do, control T, right click, skew, go up here and just slide it on over. Give it a little uh, slant. There we go. So well, then we just duplicate and duplicate it one more time. So then go back to this. Uh, we don't need that superheroes anymore because this superheroes down here is going to replace it. Highlight it all. Click delete. So now we grab our first super. Drag her on up. Kind of close. Not super close. Second one. T. Select it. Heroes. Drag her on up. Right about there. And then this one, T, that one is part one. And drag that one down a little bit. There we go. So, just highlight these, all of them actually. Control T, move them over a little bit. Maybe make them just a hair bigger. Right there. Looks pretty good. I'm going to close these all up. And we also need the background image. I think... I should be able to find that one. It is of Iron Man, Iron Lad, whatever. Um, where is it? Iron Man. There it is. Copy. Let's wait for it to render first. Copy. Go back to Photoshop. Control V. I hit Control T. And I do want that to be kind of big, so that he is easily. Uh, viewable from the thumbnail, so right about there. And make it a little smaller. I want to see some of the electricity. Bring it up a bit more. And I think I should bring these down a little bit more to about there. And so we can go back into the filter gallery. I want it to look nice. Because if I just do it the way it is, he's not super viewable. Actually, that's not bad. Okay, I think I brightened it up a little bit, didn't I? Yep, there's a curve. So I'll go up here to the curves and just play around with it. I want it to be a little brighter. Right about there, I think is good. And then that's that. So let's compare. Can I drag this one out? There it is. So here's the new one. I actually didn't get that. I probably should have given it the stroke on that one because I had it. So this one actually looks pretty good. Um... I actually love this newer one better. So yeah, that's that. It looks almost identical. Uh, put that back up and I'll just zoom in on something. In the old one, uh, this Lego didn't have that stroke around it. You could just uh, get rid of that by selecting that layer. Magic Wand. Control D. Delete. And you would also have to grab that outer one. And then you could just resize that, but... Not a huge deal in this case, this is just an example. There it is. So that's that. Um, that's pretty much the entire process I used for all of these thumbnails, except for... There was one that I didn't do, and I'll go ahead and show that real quick. Extra... Bioshock. Uh, the only one I didn't do that for is this one, because I went ahead... And I just recreated this entire thing, this entire logo. That's what it actually looks like. I didn't look, I didn't like that, so I just recreated it. Uh, doing pretty much the exact same thing. Some highlighting, 
uh, selecting the color, brushing, all that sort of stuff. So, uh, that was a pretty quick tutorial. I'll link the thumbnails I made in the description if you would like to see more of them. I just what sort of things are possible with with this this way of doing thumbnails. Um, I think it looks pretty good. I I think I'm partial to this. I like having the part or episode number look like the logo, I think it just looks cleaner. You could do what other people do and just have uh, just bright, colorful, uh, random colors like orange to yellow, gradient. That's what a lot of Minecraft people do. But I think this looks light nicer, so uh, that was a tutorial on how to make some thumbnails. If you liked it, give this video a like. Uh, if you didn't like it, dislike it. Uh, I don't know how this how this came out. This was my first tutorial. Never really done anything like this before. Um, but it was fun. So, uh, that's pretty much it. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.